you know. Uh, now, listen, we got to preview the Pacquiao-Spence fight a little bit. I'm not going to go crazy right now as far as previewing the fight because it's too far away. I'm going to talk about it multiple times, and I don't want to. I don't want to beat it into the ground too much. But what I'll say about that fight is, if Pacquiao looks like he looked against Thurman, and Father Time has been good to him because he's 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 taken time off, <clears throat> and his body's regenerating, right? Then he has a chance to beat Errol Spence. But if he regressed even a couple notches during the time he's been away, and he hasn't been training. And he hasn't been on it. And he hasn't been getting hit in the face. I think Errol Spence, there's a very good chance Errol Spence can knock him out mid to late rounds. But if Pacquiao looks like he looked against Thurman, Pacquiao could win a decision. Pacquiao can get a knockout. Any of those things could happen. Because one thing about Errol Spence, he has better footwork than he appears to have, but he is quite stationary. You know, he's not Brandon Rios stationary, but he is stationary at times. And what and Pacquiao, he loves stationary targets because he could do that, that crazy footwork he does and the left and the right. And then, then all of a sudden you're in a position that you don't expect him to be in. All of a sudden, bang, he's where you're not expecting him. Boom. And that's when the shots come. You know, he's he's in the center when you expect him to be the left. He's on the right when you expect him to be in the center. You know, and he does it real fast. So if Pacquiao looks like he looked against Thurman, don't don't write him off. That's all I'm gonna say in regards to that. You know, um, now, we got to talk about my man, Paul Felder, a little bit, because this dude had a hell of a UFC career, okay? He fought everybody that the UFC put in front of him, all right? Barboza twice. Um, he has a win over Charles Oliveira, who's the current champion, who just beat Michael Chandler, all right? So this guy's a legend. He might not have been a champ. I don't know if he'll make the UFC Hall of Fame. I don't think he will. I think his record in the UFC is like nine and six. But if you want to talk about a guy who every single fight just went out there and put 100% into every performance, could have quit many, many times, kept fighting, that's Paul Felder. So we we, we got to give Paul Felder his roses. He's uh, become a hell of an, uh, of an announcer. He's a great commentator now. So we'll still get to see him which is beautiful. So obviously, right, these guys, they fought two times, you know, went 24 rounds. It's arguable. I thought the first fight was literally a draw. That's what I saw because Wilder got two rounds with knockdowns, right? So those two rounds actually count for four rounds. And I thought he won two other rounds, right? So that's six to six. That had That's how you end up with a draw in the first fight. Obviously, he almost put Fury into another dimension, but Fury is a beast. Some people will argue that the count was a little slow. I think that's debatable if you want to look for it, but we can't, we can't die on that hill. It is what it is. He got up. He dominated most of the first fight, you know, not dominated in like a real physical way where he hurt Wilder a lot or anything like that. But with pure boxing skill, he dominated Deontay Wilder in the first fight. Then in the second fight, he, 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 he whooped Wilder's ass, you know what I mean? And Deontay came up with every excuse in the book. His drink was spiked. He's talking like a girl in the club, like, oh, they spiked my drink, my booty hole hurt the next day. Fucking talking about uh, something in his gloves, then talking about the gloves weren't right, this, this, that. Now, listen, am I going to sit here and tell you that it's not possible that there was some type of foul play? Of course not. I, ca I can't tell you that. You know what I mean? It's possible. Who the fuck knows? Maybe maybe Wilder's onto something, right? But nothing's proven. And if you're going to make an excuse, pick one. You, you, you know what I mean? Pick a damn excuse. Pick one excuse. Stick to the excuse, okay? And ride that excuse into the ground. Even if you know you're lying. If you're going to commit, fucking commit. You're like, this is my excuse. I'm, I'm, this is it. This is my baby. This is my excuse baby right here. And I'm going to raise this excuse baby until it can go off to college and get an education and make more excuse babies on its own and afford its excuse rent, all right? That's what you do if you're going to make, but you can't make this excuse and then that excuse and then this excuse. You can't do that. So Wilder made himself look like a fool after the fight. I love Wilder. I was going for Wilder in both fights. That's not a mystery. He's an American heavyweight. 
you know, we, we've been all dying for an American heavyweight for a long time, you know, and he might be wild in certain interviews and this that, but 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 he's actually a, a good a good dude, kind hearted dude, family man, you know, and uh, you know, you can watch him on Joe Rogan. He was on Joe Rogan as well as Tyson Fury. If you ever want to like get to know what people are like more in long form, uh, Joe Joe Rogan's good for that. You know, you actually get to see people talk for a few hours. You don't get to know people when you hear them talk for two minutes in an interview or, you know, or, or 30 seconds on a quick clip, whether it's ESPN or a quick, po- you know, podcast. I, that's why I really like podcasts and I'm going to go a lot in that direction. Number one, you don't got to worry about being censored as much. You can speak your mind more. Number two, um, the other thing I said that I forgot because I smoked too much weed. You know what I mean? Oh, 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 the long form shit, right? <laughs> so, so you get to learn topics in a long form way, more information in that time. You get to learn people, right? More because it's in long form. So, so, you know, I was going for Wilder, but it's arguable that he only won. And it's not even arguable. It's pretty much guaranteed that he only won four rounds out of 24. All right. But with that being said, um, he was contractually obligated to fight. I mean, Tyson Fury was contractually obligated to fight Deontay Wilder, Wilder again. So no offense or buts. You got to do the fight again. Wilder's been working with Malik Scott. He's looking good. He, you know, he's coming, come, come in and out good, you know, ending with counters good. The right hand looks great as it always does. It looks like he's, he's working on a jab a lot, which is something Deontay Wilder should be constantly flicking because he got ridiculous reach. And what people forget about Wilder is he, he's an athlete. Okay. He's a boxer now. He happened, he happened to have amazing power, which got him far, right? But he's an athlete. He played football, okay? He, the, the choice was, I could play football, but I've had these injuries. And then his daughter had a sp- spina, how you say it? Spina fifida, spina ifida. You know, you know what I'm talking about, right? His daughter had that, so he made a decision to be a prize fighter, to be a boxer, and dedicate his life to boxing for his daughter. You know, and anyone who knows the story knows that. Those that don't, not, now you know. And so he is more athletic naturally than Tyson Fury. You know, Tyson Fury's a um very gifted boxer especially for his size, right? But he's not quite as, you know, like Wilder has quick twitch and athletic skills. So if he could just add a little bit onto his game and set better traps in the third fight, he can catch Tyson Fury and knock him out. But if he doesn't do that, Tyson Fury is probably going to get a fairly boring one-sided victory. You know, maybe Wilder improves a little. He gets three rounds in this one, loses nine to three, eight to four, but doesn't do a lot because he didn't do enough to add on to his game to set a better trap. He didn't set any traps for most of the first fight until the couple times he got knockdowns, and he didn't set any traps in the second fight. And if you're fighting a guy like Tyson Fury, you got to set traps. He's too skilled. He's too talented, you know, and and you're not going to catch him. You're not just going to catch him with pure boxing skill. There's there's no fighters in the game that could do that in heavyweight, I don't think. Anthony Joshua stands a little bit of a chance, but same thing goes. You know, Fury's a better pure boxer, period. So that's my that's my thoughts on that fight. You know, you'll, you'll get Fury fans running around saying, oh, they should, Wilder didn't deserve this fight because they're, they're sour because they didn't get the Anthony Joshua fight. I want to see the Anthony Joshua fight too, right? But there's a contract. He can't breach it. They got to fight. So we're getting a third fight. I want to see it. Some people don't. It is what it is. You know what I mean? Wilder fans will run around telling you that Tyson Fury's horrible and Wilder's going to knock him out. Me, I'm just a fan of boxing. 